Welcome to a video that will challenge your beliefs and ignite the flame of internal transformation. Today, we'll delve into the topic of masters and the search for enlightenment, exposing the traps and deceptions many encounter when following false lights. This insight will be your first real initiation, an awakening to the truth that transcends the figure of the human master. The essential lesson you must learn is that there is only one true master, and that master is God, the I am that resides in every human being. Prepare to question your beliefs, challenge your conceptions, and embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. Open yourself to the possibility of finding the true light within you, recognizing your internal divinity and exploring the vast potential awaiting your discovery. This video is for you to free yourself from the worship of human masters and immerse yourself in the search for the divine that resides within you. We're about to unveil deep secrets and reveal truths that time cannot obscure. Venture into this quest and allow the internal flame of your divinity to shine brightly. Welcome to this internal exploration. Always remember that knowledge is a treasure that no one can take from you, and action is the fundamental key to implementing what we learn. Before we continue, I'd like to make a special request. If you feel the curiosity and desire to embark on this journey of self-discovery and transformation, please leave your like on this video, share your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By interacting with the content, you'll help us continue producing videos like this, full of profound knowledge and meaningful reflections. And if you find this video useful, share it with at least two people you know. After all, shared knowledge is multiplied knowledge. Gratitude to all truth seekers. I have already told you that I am Jesus. So, if you seek me, let these men go. John 18 verse 8, to which Jesus responded, I am Jesus, and Judas, who betrayed him, was with them. Then, when Jesus said, I am Jesus, they stepped back and fell to the ground. John 18 verses 5 to 6. Nowadays, there's much talk about masters, elders, enlightened gurus, and the number of followers who are constantly deceived when seeking these false lights at a cost. Most of these pseudo-masters offer their students initiation into mysteries, promising guidance and direction. Man's weakness towards these leaders, along with his worship, makes him easy prey for these schools and teachers. The good news is that most of these devoted students will discover, after years of waiting and sacrifice, that they were following a mirage. They will feel disappointed with their masters and their doctrines, a disappointment that will be worth the effort and price paid for their fruitless searches. Upon abandoning the worship of man, they will discover that what they seek will never be found outside, for the kingdom of heaven is within them. This realization will be their first real initiation, and the lesson learned will be this. There is only one master, and that master is God or the I am that resides in each of us. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Numbers 1541, You shall have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy 5 verse 7. I am your consciousness, the master and Lord, and beyond your consciousness, there is neither Lord nor master. You know this, don't you? Knowing that you are the Lord and Master of all you can be, no barrier can completely separate you from what you are conscious of being. Despite all human barriers, you could effortlessly attract to yourself everything you are conscious of being. The person who is conscious of being poor needs no help from anyone to express their poverty. The person who is conscious of being sick, even confined in the most hermetically sealed area against viruses and germs, would express their illness. There are no barriers for God because God is your consciousness of being, regardless of what you are conscious of being. You can express it effortlessly. Stop seeking the master who has not yet arrived because he is always with you. I am with you always, even to the end of the world, Matthew 28 verse 20. You can, from time to time, define yourself as many things, but you don't need to define yourself as something to know that you exist. You can project yourself from your current body if you wish, and in doing so, you'll realize that you are a faceless and formless consciousness. You don't depend on the form you're expressing. You will know what you are in essence and discover that the knowledge of this essence is God, the Father, preceding everything you have ever imagined being. There are no enlightened masters or enlightened ones outside of you. You must completely banish this superstition. 
you are the one who will always ascend from one level of consciousness to another. In doing so, you manifest the elevated level by expressing this newly acquired consciousness. Being consciousness, you are the Lord and Master. So you are the Master who brings forth everything you are now conscious of being because God, consciousness, calls things that are not as though they were, Romans 4 verse 17. Things that are not seen now will be seen from the moment you are conscious of being what is not seen now. This transition from one level of consciousness to another is the only ascension you will experience, and no other man can take you to this desired level. The power to ascend is within you, it is your consciousness. You must appropriate the level of consciousness you wish to express, affirming that you are now expressing that level. This is true ascension and is unlimited because you will never exhaust your capacity to rise. Move away from human superstitions and beliefs in mystical masters. Find the only eternal master within you. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, 1 John 4 verse 4. Believe in this, don't continue in blindness, chasing the mirage of masters. I guarantee that your search will only end in disappointment. However, whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven, Matthew 10 verse 33. You shall have no other gods before me, Exodus 20 verse 3. Be still and know that I am God, Psalms 46 verse 10. Secure the Lord of hosts and you will see with your own eyes if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out so many blessings that there will not be enough room to store them, Malachi 3 verse 10. Do you believe I am capable of doing this? Then, that which you desire to see poured out, declare yourself to be what you desire to be, and you will be. Not because the masters will give it to you, but because you have recognized me as yourself, I will give it to you, for I am all to all. Jesus did not allow himself to be called the great master, he knew that only one great master existed, and that was his father in heaven. His consciousness of being the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. Your belief in masters is a confession of your slavery, as only slaves have masters. Change your conception of yourself and you will automatically transform your world without the help of masters or anyone else, according to the change in your own conception. In the book of Numbers, it is written that there was a time when men considered themselves as grasshoppers, and because of this conception, they saw giants in the land. This is as true for man today as it was the day it was written. The man who conceives himself as a grasshopper makes the conditions of his being appear as giants in his blindness. He begs masters to help him fight against his giant problems. Jesus tried to show man that man's salvation is within himself and warned him not to seek the Savior in places or people. If anyone comes saying, look here or look there, do not believe him, for the kingdom of God is within you, Matthew 24 verse 23. Jesus not only refused to be called the great master, but he also warned his followers not to greet anyone on the way, Luke 10 verse 4. He made it clear that we should not recognize any authority or superior other than God the Father. Jesus established the identity of the Father as man's consciousness of being. I and my Father are one, but my Father is greater than I. I am one with what I am conscious of being and I am greater than all that I am conscious of being. The Creator is always greater than His creation. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. John 3 verse 14. The serpent symbolizes man's current conception of himself as a crawling worm living in the desert of human confusion. Just as Moses rose from this crawling conception to the consciousness of being God, I am who I am, so must you serve. On the day you declare, like Moses, I am what I am, your claim will bloom in the desert. Your consciousness is a master that conjures all things into being what it desires. By affirming yourself as the Lord and Master, you can make everything you are conscious of being appear in your world. No man comes to me unless the Father within me has brought him, and I and my Father are one. You are constantly attracting to yourself everything you are conscious of being. Change your conception of yourself from slave to Christ. Without shame, make this affirmation. Simply say, I am Christ, and you will do the works of Christ. Truly, truly. I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and will do even greater works than these because I go to the Father, John 14 verse 12. Have the same attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, 
being fully in the nature of God, did not consider it abuse to declare himself one with God, Philippians 2 verse 6. Jesus knew that anyone who dared to declare himself as Christ would automatically assume the abilities to express the works of his conception of Christ. He also knew that the exclusive use of this principle of expression was not given only to him. He alone constantly referred to his Father in heaven. He claimed that his works would not only be equaled but surpassed by those individuals who dared to affirm themselves as greater than he, Jesus, conceived himself to be. By declaring that he and his Father were one, but his Father was greater than he, he revealed his awareness that the Father was one with what he was conscious of being. He discovered that the Father or the essence of his consciousness is greater than what he, as Jesus, was conscious of being. You and your conception of yourself are one, but you will always be greater than any conception you have had or will have about yourself. Man cannot perform the works of Jesus Christ because he tries to perform them from his current level of consciousness. You will never transcend your current achievements through sacrifice and struggle. Your current level of consciousness will only be transcended when you overcome your current state and ascend to a higher level of consciousness, directing your attention away from your current limitations and focusing it on being what you desire. Don't see this superficially as mere daydreaming or whimsical thinking, positively affirm yourself to be or have what you desire. I am that without sacrifice, without diet, without tricks, without limitations. All that is required of you is to accept your desire. If you dare to claim it, you will express it. Meditate on this. Oh, if there were someone among you who would close the doors of the temple, at least my fire on the altar would not be lit in vain. For I do not delight in the smallest offerings, says the Lord of hosts. I will not accept offering from your hands, neither by force nor by violence, but by the power of my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, Malachi 1 verse 10, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you, Matthew 7 verse 7. All who are thirsty, come to the crystal waters. And you who have no money or resources, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost, Isaiah 55 verse 1. The works are finished, all that is required of you is to bring these qualities into expression. With this affirmation, I am this, affirming yourself as what you want to be, you will be the expressions or the impressions. They never precede the proofs of what you are, they arise after the affirmation of what you are, they never precede. Leaving everything in following me is a double invitation for you. First, an invitation to completely abandon all problems, and second, an invitation to stand firm in the affirmation of being what you desire to be. Don't be like Lot's wife in Genesis 19, who, by looking back, turned into a pillar of salt, preserving a dead past. Be like Lot, who didn't look back but kept his vision focused on the promised land, on what he desired. Do this and you will discover that you have found the true master who makes the invisible visible through the command I am. We have reached the end of this inspiring video, but the journey doesn't have to end here. If you enjoyed the content and felt it resonated with you, please leave a like and share your reflections in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any updates and continue exploring the mysteries of consciousness and personal transformation. Gratitude for being part of this journey with us until the next video. To further enhance our understanding and application of the principles discussed, let's explore two additional subtopics that are closely related to the core message. The power of self-awareness and manifestation, while we've touched on the importance of recognizing the divine within, it's crucial to delve deeper into the role of self-awareness in the manifestation process. Self-awareness is the foundation upon which all spiritual growth and manifestation is built. It's the ability to observe your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors without judgment, allowing you to consciously choose your responses rather than react automatically. To cultivate self-awareness. Practice mindfulness meditation regularly, observing your thoughts and emotions without attachment. Keep a journal to track your inner dialogue and identify patterns in your thinking. Regularly ask yourself, what am I feeling right now, and why am I feeling this way? Seek feedback from trusted others to gain different perspectives on your behavior and attitudes. As you become more self-aware, you'll be better equipped to recognize and release limiting beliefs that may be hindering your manifestation efforts. 
you'll also be more attuned to the subtle guidance of your inner divine nature, allowing you to make choices that align with your highest good. Remember, the journey of self-awareness is ongoing. It's not about achieving perfection, but about continually expanding your understanding of yourself and your place in the universe. The concept of divine timing and manifestation, another important aspect to consider is the concept of divine timing. While we've emphasized the power of immediate affirmation and living in the present moment, it's also crucial to understand that manifestation often unfolds according to a higher wisdom that may not always align with our human timelines. Divine timing suggests that there's a perfect moment for everything to come into being, orchestrated by the infinite intelligence of the universe. This concept invites us to trust in the process of manifestation, even when things don't seem to be happening as quickly as we'd like. To align with divine timing. Practice patience and trust, knowing that everything is unfolding for your highest good. Stay open to unexpected opportunities and synchronicities that may be guiding you towards your desires. Focus on enjoying the journey rather than fixating on the destination. Use periods of apparent inactivity or delay as opportunities for inner growth and preparation. Understanding divine timing can help alleviate frustration and anxiety in the manifestation process. It reminds us that while we are co-creators with the divine, we're also part of a larger cosmic plan that may have timing different from our personal expectations. By incorporating these concepts of self-awareness and divine timing into your practice, you create a more holistic approach to manifestation. This approach acknowledges both your power as a divine being and your place within the larger tapestry of universal wisdom. Remember, the journey of manifestation is not just about getting what you want, it's about becoming who you truly are. As you continue to explore and apply these principles, stay open to the wisdom that unfolds within you. Trust in your inner divinity, embrace the process of self-discovery, and allow the universe to surprise and delight you with its perfect timing. Your journey of awakening and manifestation is unique and precious. Embrace it with joy, curiosity, and an open heart. The universe is not just listening to your desires, it's eagerly awaiting your full realization of the divine power within you. Thank you for joining us on this profound exploration of consciousness and manifestation. May your path be illuminated by the light of your own divine nature, and may you continue to grow, evolve, and manifest your highest aspirations. Until we meet again, remember that you are the master you've been seeking, the divine incarnate, capable of creating miracles through the power of your consciousness. Embrace this truth, live it fully, and watch as your world transforms in beautiful and unexpected ways.